Yay, we're back. And I'm about to share with you the final three things I learned in my divorce. Okay, the seventh one is be kinder to yourself. Be more patient with yourself. Be more compassionate with yourself. Be more caring to yourself. Be more loving to yourself. Because in the end, it is you who has to show up for yourself in your new chapter. Nobody is rewriting your chapter for you except you. If you didn't love yourself before, you need to start loving yourself now. Because in the end, it's just you, yourself, and you that you have. And I learned that, and I love it. So people think, oh, this self-love thing, Ivy, means you're being selfish. Oh, yes, yes. It's okay to be selfish a little. Selfish so that you can protect yourself. And I say that with my full chest. <laughs> it's okay, right? It's okay to take time to love yourself. You know, sometimes... I mean, before, when you think about it, before, when you think about your, your life, you're running around for everybody, but you're never thinking about yourself. But now, you need to be kinder to yourself. You need to be more compassionate, right? You need to think of yourself first. So you need to create time for yourself. And I think that this is one of the things that I practice so much, and I love it. I used to just love to spend time with myself. Because you know what? You become more comfortable with yourself when you're alone. You get to know yourself better. And then you also learn to spend time with the Lord God Almighty. You're speaking to Him, having conversations, and just generally coming to a place of peace, that peace that surpasses all understanding. <laughs> you need to love yourself, right? Okay. Now the eighth one is hold your head up high and keep on moving keep forgiving keep leaving keep winning those who slandered you will be in awe of you oh yes yes be happy yes you went through a storm but you are still standing i'm still standing yeah 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 <laughs> okay i know my voice isn't that great but i just love to sing and I will sing. <laughs> yes. But you're still standing. And because you're still standing, you're still, you know, and you're you're doing those things that you need to do. You're crushing your goals. You're you're becoming that leader that people respect. You're you're at your job, you're 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 performing, right? My God. It means that you're growing, you're healing and you're growing. What do you think is gonna happen? People who thought that you wouldn't that you wouldn't be able to survive, they begin to respect you. They begin to you know, like, so they look at you with awe oh, and they're like, wow, how did she do this? So it's so important, right? Now the final one, which is the ninth one, is your emotions are currency. You can choose to spend it or choose to save it. Some of the, the spending you will enjoy. And some you will regret. <laughs> you can also invest in your emotions with self-leadership and intelligence because you know it will compound in plenty yield for you. And when I thought about this in my journey, right? Emotions, emotions. There's so much emotions going on. You're angry, you're sad. You're upset, you're afraid, you're anxious, you're ashamed, so much emotions. Remember that they are currency, it's like money. How do you want to spend it? If you're going through a co-parenting relationship, remember your emotions are currency. Be careful how you show your emotions. So emotional intelligence is very critical. That means working on yourself is key. You need to know your weaknesses, you need to know your strengths. I have a bonus, right? And I said I did. Oh, did I say I did? Can't remember. But you know what? It's a tenth thing. When you look at your past, then look at your future and how you desire to, to be. You will be intentional about how you design and live in your present. 
This is something they have mulled over. Because you, there's nothing you can do about, about your past, right? Nothing. You've gone through the pain. I mean, your eyes, your eyes are on the future. And if you're like me, I wanted something better. I wanted a better future. That meant that I needed to design how I was living in my present life. And I needed to be intentional about it. It's not all about money. You can have money, but you don't have peace. And for me, peace was really important. Joy in my home. My son, oh my gosh, my son was like the most one of the most critical things for me. I wanted him to be stable, to have a a great mind mindset, right? Regardless of the divorce. So everything I was doing was intentional. My healing was intentional. Because I knew that if I didn't heal, then I couldn't walk into the kind of future that I wanted. Because it's one thing to say, oh, I'm going to... Because it's one thing to say, oh, I'm going to remarry again. But the question is, when you remarry, is it the same person who's going to that marriage or an upgraded, updated version of yourself? And marriage is just one part. What about my job? I wanted to grow. I wanted to go higher. You know, I wanted to take on more responsibilities in my office, right? At my workplace. So I needed to be in a good frame of mind as a good leader and, you know, one who performed, who took on challenges and was able to work them out. So my present is very intentional. What I do in my present is very intentional because it actually influences the outcomes of my future. So where are you? Do you have a vision on how, on how you want your life to be in the future? Because sometimes those images that we, we think of in our heads, they are catalysts. They drive us to do now. They drive us to be now. They drive us to act now. So where are you? What are you looking at? Are you still looking at your past? <laughs> Stop looking at your past. The only time you should look at your past is something that maybe you didn't do well and you want to work on it now. So you prepare yourself for the future. That's the only time you should be looking at your past. Don't look at your past for too long. There's nothing much there. Right? So... That's the bonus, people. What are you looking at? Do you also have a picture of your future? And do you have a plan for your present? How are you living in your present? The Bible tells us that teach us how to number our days. And I think it's really instructive. You have a picture of how you want to live your life. But you must number your days. How are you living every day of your life? Because none of us have we don't have an idea of how long we're going to live, right? But how are we living each day in our lives? Are we intentional about it? Or just fluid? <laughs> Alright. If you enjoyed this 10 things I've shared with you, I hope that they speak to you. I hope that there's a desire that will well up in you to be who you are meant to be. Cheers. Gotta go.